Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another look at the India Fox Teco F35. This is of course the B variant and in this video we're going to be looking at a case one recovery uh, and a vertical landing on deck, including the use of controls, key bindings and techniques and speeds and altitudes along the way. The pause on here were active pause, uh, just so I can show you what I've set up in the cockpit. Uh, you can see under the uh, heading we've got 240 because I know this uh, ship is uh, following a course of 240 and that will help me with my um, downwind heading of 060 so I'll use that for reference throughout. Obviously we've got our altitude set AMSL we can press the B key or set the altitude. If you don't know what the uh, the altimeter setting is then you can have a look at your rad out and just change the altimeter setting till your altimeter reads the same as your rad out because of course we're over the sea. Uh, here I've set uh, about four kilometers or four miles an hour worth of wind. Not that it's going to be much of a factor. And also remember this ship is stationary. Normally it'd be cruising into wind to help you out. Uh, so without further ado, let's unpause and fly this procedure. Unfortunately, I can't pre-record this in terms of uh, getting playback from the external camera. So any external views you see, I'll be flying live at the same time. So excuse any shoddy uh, flying as we go. Initial point, 350 knots, 800 feet AMSL, and I'm positioned to the right-hand side of the carrier, and the pattern is to the left. I'm wide enough so I can see the carrier down to the left-hand side, and I'll extend upwind no more than one mile. Next six miles a minute, which is what 350 knots gives us, uh, that's about 10 seconds. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That'll do for the count. And I'll pull back on the stick to slow us down and come left onto a downwind heading of 060. I'll keep the flight path marker roughly on the horizon line on the HUD, so I stay level. You can descend down to 600 feet, but I'll keep it simple and go for 800 feet throughout this pattern. If you hit the stall warner like I did, just ease off the back stick pressure and you're aiming to roll out less than 240 knots. Downwind reference is good, speed is good, gross weight is less than 40,000 pounds, gear comes down. That is it. Watch out for trim changes as the flaps travel because you'll get quite a bit of lift and we're looking for an on-speed AOA at around 150 knots. Lost a little bit of altitude, 600 feet, that's fine. And around about here, I'll tip final. Or whatever they call it in naval speak. About one to two degrees nose down, you can see the staple is on the right-hand side of the flight path marker and that's staying nicely there at 150 knots. And we'll hold 30 degrees angler bank around the final turn. We're aiming to roll out at 300 feet, so adjust your rate of descent or your pitch attitude in order to get that 300 feet by the time you roll out. I'm just increasing the angler bank ever so slightly because I think I had quite a tight pan. So play the final turn as you need to, to line up with the ship left hand side. 300 feet. And we're ready to go into stovel mode. Try and have the stick neutral when you do it, because it will pitch you up otherwise. 120 knots on the left hand side of the ship, power is required to maintain that, and the stovel mode is assigned to the wing light key binding. Next we'll need the hover mode as we get roughly a beam our landing area, and that's assigned to the heading at autopilot heading hold function. So hover mode is engaged if you want to press it on the key here, so that's the hover mode button and that's the stovel button down to the left hand side. So those are the two button presses if you want to make those, but I thoroughly recommend assigning them and I've assigned them to my stream deck. Now those animations were super quick because obviously I'd uh, animated from inside the cockpit and the animations are just catching up. So whilst we're here, whilst we're stationary, let's have a quick look around this beautiful airplane. Very cool. Uh, another thing to note, once you're in this position, you'll need to go fore and aft. Normally you could do that with throttle or autopilot speed control. They've uh, assigned this to the, uh, let me see, aileron trim. So if I trim left aileron, we'll go backwards. And if I trim right aileron, we'll go forwards. A little strange that it's aileron, but it works, it's fine. And then we can move our position. So I'm gonna try and put uh, myself a beam, one of these white lines. 
At this stage, the throttle is doing nothing for me, so I'll just leave the throttle position wherever it is. And I'm now stabilized pretty much on that white line. If I want to go down, I can push the stick forwards, and you can see that staple on the HUD goes down. If I want to go up, I'll bring the stick back. The throttle does nothing for us at this stage. You want to aim for no lower than 120 feet as you cross towards the deck, and you can see the radar indicates the same. I'm going a bit back a bit, so I'll just try and trim right halo on to go forwards, and then move across to the deck. If you want to turn the aircraft left and right, just use the rudder pedals. That's good. Now I'm looking over the nose to see that yellow line. I want to put uh, my head over the yellow line. That seems to have us in position. Nice and stable. And now to come down, we just push forward on the stick. The throttle needs to stay exactly where it is. Do not bring the throttle to idle. That's a technique in case the weight on wheel switch is uh, incorrect. You're not going to uh, reduce power unexpectedly. Keep a constant rate of descent all the way down. And you'll notice that regardless of your throttle position, the, th the aircraft will select auto TO. I'm not sure what it stands for, but essentially it means the throttle goes to idle as soon as it detects weight on wheels. Now I'm going to select my throttle to idle if I haven't already. And I'll deselect stable mode. In fact, park and brake on, deselect stable mode. And you'll see my nozzle indications disappear. We are now on the deck of the carrier. Safe and sound. Looking pretty awesome. So we're here now. It'd be rude not to uh, get us airborne again, so let's have a look at our fuel weight. We're less than 40,000 pounds, so you can see gross weight 35.8. We've got sufficient fuel for what we need to do. Uh, we've got a heading bug based on our takeoff direction in case we need to come back. Uh, and that's all we need. Have a look at the Stovall animation from outside. That's very cool. Checking full and free. Everything works. And now we're good to go. Parking brake is off. Brakes are applied. You can see if I go back stick, you'll see the uh, nozzles go to the down position. If I go forward stick, you'll see the nozzles go to the aft position. Technique for taking off in Stovall mode is do not press forward on the stick because the nose will just bury down. What you want is a slight aft stick pressure and it'll just take off whenever it feels ready to. So here we go. Power's up, brakes release, aft stick pressure. We're up, climbing, gear. Gear is up as we're approaching 200 knots. Level mode disengaged. We're now a conventional aircraft again. And we'll just end with a supersonic pass of the ship, because why the heck not? 0.91 Nice Cool, I hope you've had a very Merry Christmas and I wish you a Happy New Year and until the next time take care, stay safe